I'm Michelle Perchonik and I work at Johnson Space Center in the Space Food Systems Laboratory, which is the only food lab at NASA. Food science is a field that not a whole lot of people know about. It's a field of, of a applying any of the sciences to food, which is very exciting because that way we have um, when I worked in industry, I was able to find products that I developed in the grocery store. We get very upset when people say we're NASA chefs. I don't like to cook. I feel very strongly that my family should eat a healthy meal every night, but I don't like to cook. I, but I do love food science. We get a lot of questions, do you still feed the, crew, the astronauts tubes and cubes? Because that's how it started. Basically the tubes that look like toothpaste tubes and applesauce or pudding or pureed soups and they would eat that or these compressed cubes and the astronauts would say these taste okay but they're just not satisfying. Well they were only up there for two or three days and as we've developed uh, longer and longer missions and that and the crew are up there for longer times even the Apollo crew we started really developing better foods. So this is our beverages. All our beverages are dry and we had the question earlier, well, if you want cream with your, your coffee, what do you do? It gets added here. So we get from the astronauts, I drink my coffee with cream or I drink it with sugar or both, and that's what we send up to them. This is a, a one-way valve. So when the needle goes in there and, then re is re and you add the water and then you remove the needle, the water won't leave. However, once you insert the straw, it will because this is a bigger hole and that one-way valve disappears. So once they insert the straw, and this is like a drink straw from, from the juice boxes, then we have to add the, the clamp. And this is basically a hospital clamp. And um, at, when the crew is ready to drink something, they open up the clamp, they drink, then they close the clamp, and then we ask them to just drink the rest of the liquid in here, because if not, it's all gonna start floating out. And when liquid floats, it, it actually floats in a bubble. This is one of our desserts, apricot cobbler. This is really good. About uh, four years ago, um, our food scientists in the lab decided, or we're, we were given some funding to do product development for some new products for our International Space Station crew. Being up there for up to six months, they want a lot of variety, and they were also looking for some desserts that they could warm. So this happens to be one. This is basically a canned food in a pouch to get um, the product stable. You can also remove all the water and then there's no water for the microorganisms to grow. So this is um, the herb, seasoned uh, eggs, scrambled eggs. And here we actually, um, we, we make the eggs and then we put them in little cups and we put them through a freeze dryer. The advantage here is when they do try to hydrate or when they do hydrate it, um, the food hydrates much more easily and much more quickly. And we always have the directions on the label because we have this up on International Space Station and we provide half the food to the station and half the food comes from Russia, we have to have our food both in Russian and English label. We tell them how many mils of water to add and how long to wait. As we speak, like this week, the first shipment of Japanese Space Agency food is coming to Houston for us to stow and it's, um, it'll be bonus food this first time so it's specially uh, in a special container. Eventually it will get integrated into the U.S. food system. Next will be the European Space Agency. They're providing us with some food items from France. And then after that will be the Canadian Space Agency and they will be providing us. Because as we go to a crew of six in about a year, we're going to start seeing international partners on board for six months.